so for all the viewers you know my warm greetings to you today i'm going to talk about you know an important issue so you know the, the north delhi municipal corporation you know this is the one of the three mcds that, that was split from the main municipal corporation of delhi has you know on 14th of june 2021 put up a circular in the newspaper that the town hall is for lease available for lease for anybody who wants to take it and you know the tenders are going to open soon this lease is available for 33 years now you know there are a lot of questions that i need to ask a lot of you know points that we need to think about as you know people who are responsible for the development of the city as architects as urban designers and urban planners that you know this town hall is a heritage monument it is a victorian era building that was uh, you know used for multiple purposes and this was in 2018 also there was a plan of giving it out to lease now the question is not only about town hall the question is about what to do with heritage buildings there are multiple approaches to dealing with heritage building if you look in delhi for example there are a lot of these old monuments like the rahim khan and the nila gumbad and the other monuments which have been restored by the aga khan foundation and havels and other organizations along with the archaeological survey of india the question here is what do we do with such buildings do we you know uh, make them into monuments as they were by restoring them and then making them available for public or there's another section of people who think that these monuments have to be adaptively reused that means these monuments have to be made into something that is of use concurrently use today contemporary use of these monuments has to be done now what does that mean for example in puddu kotai tamil nadu there are a lot of these chettiar houses now chettiar houses are you know big mansions that they built when chettiars used to do you know international trade you know with burma and other countries and they were they had really a lot of resources and you know these houses were made out of selected items you know like wood was from somewhere the chandeliers were some somewhere the marble was from somewhere and all these were collected together to make this beautiful chettiar houses now an example of a chettiar house that has been adaptively reused to be made into a hotel is the chidambara vilas the chidambara vilas is in puddokotai and you know if you look at it it's a beautiful uh, old mansion that has been restored and you know it has been made into two parts the first part is the old monument uh, i mean the own building itself which they are using for the entrance foyer dining rooms uh, and you know the welcome rooms and you know the places for a, like a party or a banquet and then they have built at the back of this old building they have made another building with the new facilities but in total it looks like one structure and the old structure you know the important elements like the dining hall the welcome hall the foyer and you know the kitchen are still being used of the old building it has been adaptively reused now it gave an opportunity to the owners because the chettiar houses were not under archaeological survey of india they were in private ownership yet they were you know as good as heritage structures hence they were the family who owned the house took this decision and made it into a uh, adaptively reused into and made it into a hotel now the question is same you know with such a heritage structure like town hall is probably it is not under the archaeological survey of india but yet it is a heritage structure should it be restored as such you know there to make a restoration project you know there was an attempt uh, to restore and facelift the building and you know the government only uh, uses the building itself now that costs a lot of money and you know for that an architect has to be selected and the dpr has to be prepared on time at least 3 years as per a reliable source at least three years are required for a dpr for a restoration project like this is required you know because so many things have to be put into account now the question here is what should we do with heritage buildings you know should we restore them i mean just the facelifting and making them available for the people you know in five rupee 10 rupee 20 rupees ticket so that they come and you you know have a look at the buildings you know make it excellent backdrops or photographs you know and other uses for example the sundar nursery which has a lot of heritage monuments today has been you know made into a very very beautiful uh, you know a park open for the public you know with a small ticket and you know people go there you know to spend time and you know there's a another thing that the government government revenue takes revenue from is you know 
people who want to use the monuments and the Sundar nursery as a backdrop, people come and you know take photographs and they charge some fees for that kind of photography. Now, that's one use of it. The other use is like the Jadambra Velas, which has converted that old monument into a hotel. Now, there are a lot of issues around, you know, doing adaptive reuse. For example, a Chidambra Vilas, which was a house, could be easily converted into a hotel. But what do we do with tombs? Tombs have some kind of a religious or a, a cultural or a social value attached to them. You know, for example, in the Kutub, around the Kutub area in the Meroli Archaeological Park, there was a monument in which when the British came, they removed the tomb away and they made that into a dining room. Now, that is something we never want to happen. Uh, because that is kind of an insult it is unethical but you know having some kind of a external uh, space around that monument which can be developed and you know which is in the same architectural style as that monument and which can be used for some social use i think that is something that we should really really look you know look uh, into and you know make sure that also becomes our standard operating procedure when dealing with heritage monuments because that will add on to value now of course when if we look at the background of the archaeological survey of india why it made such strict rules that heritage monuments have to be only restored and conserved and no building no activity around it is because post partition there were a lot of encroachments around the archaeological monuments now probably that was the approach then because then we had to make sure that there is no encroachment at any cost around any heritage monument so they made sure that you know certain area around the monument remains totally unused area and it only of heritage use but today after 70 years of independence you know we have to rethink and relook as to what can happen to heritage structures this is the case which opened up because of the uh, town hall being opened up for lease now, there are a lot of people who think this is a good idea because opening it for, for lease means commercial activity, something of use can happen. Uh, and there are other other side, other people, you know, who say that this is not a good idea. It should be retained as a heritage monument, restored, and, you know, it should be open to people and they should just be allowed to visit it and click photographs and all. Now, I want to ask you, what do you think is the perfect way of dealing with heritage structures? Thank you very much. Ah! <laughs>